Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video in bonding and molecular structure. So let's get moving. Bam! So today we're going to be doing chlorine trifluorides, molecular geometry, and oh, so much more. So chlorine trifluoride. What is the formula for chlorine tri trifluoride? Tri is for three. So that tells you how many fluorines there are, and it's one chlorine. So chlorine and three fluorines. You're going to look on your periodic table on that side, rather. Uh, that side, rather. Uh, uh, to get the number of valence electrons for chlorine and for fluorine, they're the same. There are three fluorines, however, we're going to sum these numbers up, then we're going to get 28. We're going to divide these by two, then we are going to get our 14 pairs of electrons. That is the least electronegative element, that goes smack in the middle. So that's why the chlorine's in the middle and not the fluorine, because the fluorine's the most electronegative element there is. Now I'm going to spread those fluorines around the chlorine in the X marks, this plus mark pattern, if you will, and that is what I've done there. Now I'm going to take uh, 14 pairs of electrons is what I have. I'm going to take pairs of electrons and place them between the central element and the outside element as a single or a sigma bond. I've done that right there. I still have some pairs of electrons left over, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place lone pairs of electrons around the outside elements as lone pairs. So I've done that with the fluorine right there. Now, do I have any extra pairs of electrons left over? The question is, is that true or not? And then, yes, I do. I have two pairs of electrons left over. So those are going to go smack right in the center element. And now I'm going to ask the next question. Is chlorine period three or greater? So can it exceed the octet rule and be hypervalent? It is a yes for that. And that's why chlorine can be hypervalent, exceeding the octet rule. And that's why I can continue to dump those electrons on the central element. And we're okay. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up here. Oh, we do need to verify the octet rule for fluorine. And that is verified right there because it's period two. Four elements in period two have to have an octet, and fluorine is one of them. I'm going to clean up this molecule here and make bonding pairs of electrons as lines and lone pairs as dots, just like they were before. And now I have this Lewis dot structure here. You should see the central chlorine there, and there are three singly bonded fluorines and two sets of lone pairs of electrons around the central chlorine. Okay, now we're going to get that axe geometry here. So it's A for the chlorine in the middle, X3 because there's three fluorines, and E2 for the two pairs of electrons on the central chlorine. And that is what you get right there. That's AX3E2. That is three bonding and two non-bonding domains. Hopefully that works out well for you. Now, from either the AX3E2, you have to memorize the name of that, geometric shape, or three bonding and two non-bonding, you have to memorize the name of that geometric shape. And of course, that geometric shape's name is, that's right, it is T-shaped. Like, I pity the fool, I'm Mr. T. All right, so there's the T-shape one right there. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do the um, hybridization of this. So we're going to count the number of domains around the central element. So um, oh yes, I forgot about the bond angles. The bond angles, that's less than 90, and I'll show you why that is the case, because there's lone pairs of electrons on the central element. Those are compressing the bond angles, which you would think would be 90 degrees, but they're not quite. Okay, now, hybridization. S, P1, P2, P3, D, SP3, D hybridize. Oh, that is fantastic. Hopefully that works out well for you. Wait, there's more here, okay? And then this is the uh, ball and stick model, if you will. Okay, this is the T-shape. Hopefully you see the T-shape. There are two sets of lone pairs of electrons on the central region. That's right there. And then there are three sets of bonding. Okay, it looks like these are 90 degrees, which you would think that normally that would be. But because of these lone pairs of electrons, it's going to compress the bond angle here. So that it is something less than 90 degrees. Now we're going to ask that polarity, nonpolar question. So does this have polar bonds? i.e., is the chlorine and fluorine difference in electronegativity? The answer is yes on that one. Now, the next question is, is this symmetrical or asymmetrical? Oh, that is certainly this side is different than this side. This top end is different than this bottom end. That is asymmetrical, and therefore, this is going to be polar. In fact, any time that it is T-shaped or diphenoidal, like the previous video, the shape itself is 
asymmetric. Therefore, it is most certainly polar. No matter what atoms are on the outside, it's always going to be polar. Okay, and then here is that answer right there in terms of the polarity. So T-shaped is always polar. There's the there's the T-shape there for you. Those are two lone pairs of electrons compressing those bond angles. Okay, that is another crazy hat video, and I got a crazy hat here. Well, I'm not sure if it's a really crazy hat, but it's a great winter's hat. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Pass on my YouTube channel to college students, to your friends, your neighbors, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, pass it on to everyone. Have them all subscribe now. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye now.